one. I'm glad you brought up Louisiana. I think it's really fascinating you grew up in Louisiana. I actually love Louisiana. I feel like it's, what do they say about Louisiana? It's one of those, um, it's one of the only states where certain parts you can be in it and you feel like you're not in this America mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Could Very you speak? Europeans. Yeah, yeah. Could you speak to mm-hmm. a little bit of like who you are, you know, as an artist, as a person, when you, you know, think about Louisiana, how it sort of shaped you, the culture. And I'd be curious if there's a, you know, a certain food or something like that. Cause mm-hmm. you know, when you're back home or if you're really mm-hmm. craving a taste of home, if there's something that you always go for. Okay. I love Louisiana. I could talk about Louisiana right. every single second. I love it so much. Um, grew up there, born and raised. And the thing about Louisiana is it's a very much of a melting pot culture, even though you wouldn't necessarily know that from the outset, right? We are known as swamp people, but we are, there's a lot more. Have you seen the show Swamp, swamp people? people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because that was going to go over like a little balloon if you had it. But that that show, this is kind of my like cultural awakening, if mm-hmm. you will. Um, I remember I was 16 years old and I was watching Troy on the show uh, talk English. English that I always grew up hearing. I thought that's how, you know, I just didn't know people <laughs> couldn't understand that. So I'm looking at the TV and I'm like, why do they have subtitles on English? Like what? I don't understand. Like this is very... <laughs> You can understand what he's saying. He's speaking yeah. in English. This is an English speaking dominant country. Like, why do they have subtitles? That was the first time I realized, oh my gosh, I live in a subculture. Like, <laughs> holy people cow. don't understand what no he's saying. No one knows what he's saying, and I can uh-huh. understand every single word perfectly clear. Like, I know exactly. That was the first like realization of, okay, there is something really different here. And the more and more, my grandfather grew up only speaking French. He, started speaking English when he got to elementary school because he got in trouble for speaking French all the time. You know, they didn't want that French immersion to come into, we're the only state that is still run uh, by Napoleonic code versus the British code, which all the rest of the United States is run by. So yeah, it's, there's a lot of culture and a lot of history there, but all the music, I mean, golly, the music is just powerful. You've got Zydeco, you've got jazz, New Orleans is like the birthplace of of jazz. It's just really profound how much musical influence was given to me through growing up in that state. Um, also, my friends, like I didn't know this, but I grew up in kind of a little hippie community, but I didn't realize it at the time. I just thought, oh, this is kind of what life looks like, you know? But there, Lafayette, where I grew up, there were there's always some music festival, um, some way to engage. You celebrate tomatoes, you celebrate crawfish. You have a tomato festival, a crawfish <laughs> festival. That's the Any, thing. It's always a party for every always. any anything, anytime. Always. Yeah. Crawfish boils and yes. all the good stuff. There's a celebration around every corner. One time we were driving back from um, an LSU game. I went to LSU and I was visiting though. It was after How Can It Be had come out. And I took my manager with me and I was like, come on. And we were driving back across the Mississippi, I mean about across the uh Atchafalaya Bridge. Now, here's the thing about the bridges in Louisiana is they're so long because of how much water. So the Pontchartrain Bridge is like, I think it's 21 miles long, that one bridge. Like, you cannot get off of it. It's Over all water? All water. Wow. It's the longest bridge in the world until a couple of years ago when trying to build one. So it we, like, have very long bridges. So I say that point to say we're on this long bridge. And a wreck happens or some something happened. And instead of it being like we had to sit in our car for three hours on a bridge on top of water, uh, we all there was a party bus in front of us because we were all coming back from LSU and they opened the doors. People food. start bringing out food and we line danced on the bridge till two bridge? o'clock in the morning while we just sat there and waited for hours, for hours, hours, hours and hours. We're all talking. Everybody has their t- cars turned off, but the lights on and you're just like. Everybody starts line dancing and cutting up. That is uniquely awesome. It what is, a great story. That it is such a Warren Diggle story. Yeah. It's just a whole world of its own. And so that, just that kind of perspective, it influenced me in ways way beyond. We always talk to people. You look people in the eye. You have conversations with people. It's old school in that regard. But then you also have these beautiful musical elements that, yeah, shape who I am. 